the cover here. Um, and it is expanding customer relationships. And the big takeaway is, okay, we've gotten the sale. All right, we, we sold them something. But then what? What are you thinking some things you need to do after you sold somebody something? It's got to get delivered, right? All right, what, what, what is involved in that? Staying in contact, but, but, but uh, let's say I need, y'all need a product, right? Um, I'm not gonna let Re Rebecca pick the product this week. That was a, we were Sasquatch bottle openers, were we not? It's still a great investment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of a bottle opener, especially around five o'clock. Um, anybody got a product they wanna volunteer? I don't wanna volunteer somebody to pick one. Shoelaces, dang, y why are y'all so, uh, Obscure. The aglets. You know what? Let's go with shoelaces. We have a nominee. Shoelaces, but high-end specialty shoelaces, kind of like how socks have become a thing. You know, like my, my designer socks here with my kids on. They got me this for uh, Christmas. I thought it was pretty cool. Shoelaces, high-end shoelaces that make a statement. Okay, you know, like neon, and they say stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, I've sold your store on shoelaces. All right, I'm starting to wish for the days of the Sasquatch call open, but I've sold your store on shoelaces. Now what? Is that it? What do you do next? Well, first of all, you got to get delivered. Yeah. How, how does their how do how do their products arrive at their store? Is there a time to deliver? Is there a time not to deliver? Will you upset them if they have to stop their lunch break to accept your delivery? Can I jump out of a different example for a second? I used to have truckloads of fertilizer delivered to Walmarts, Lowe's, and Home Depots. How did the associates feel if I got it delivered during their lunch break? There's usually a handful of people who have forklift licenses. How does my truck driver feel if I have him arrive the very minute the only forklift driver went on a one hour break? Does that affect his day? I would have it delivered to Brunswick, Georgia out of Columbia, South Carolina. Does an hour make a difference between Brunswick and Savannah? You bet. Does that cost that driver time and money? You bet. So you have to arrange for the logistical aspect of your product or service being delivered. Think about a plumber as a service. OK, you got a plumber coming to your house. Can they just say, guess what? I'm just coming Wednesday, whether you're in town or not. How do they get in your house? They can't deliver a service when you're not there, can they? I had a fella coming to my house wanting to do some work today. Is he coming today? No, I'm here teaching you fine folks. He's coming Thursday. Because I'm there. Okay. The same thing where there's shoelaces, fertilizer, plumbing service, you have to arrange for the logistics. Now, a lot of salespeople say that's not my job. That's for somebody back at the corporate to handle. They'll be in touch. Does that sound like relational selling to you? Delivery is part of the sale. Okay, delivery is part of the sale. Because if I come and convince you of all this and this and this, and I tell you, I'm gonna to listen to you and I'm gonna take care of your problems and I'm gonna do this, but when it comes time that you've already committed the money and bought the product and you never see me again, what's the consequence of that? Come on, young, 400 level class, discussion is expected. The relationship falters. The relationship falters. Do you order from me again? No. <clears throat> You've got to make sure the product gets there and how it's supposed to be and when it's supposed to be. 
Okay. And with respect to each customer. Now, is that complicated? You bet. The trucks I had when I was working with Penn can see would be delivering to 30 plus people in a single day. Did I have to help coordinate that? Who has intimate knowledge of when the Brunswick Walmart needs it and when the, the Savannah Home Depot needs it and the Rinkin Hardware needs it? Can I help facilitate that? You bet. The best salespeople sell through delivery. And then they what? They follow up. Did it meet your expectations? Did your product do what I said it was going to do? If not, how not? How can I fix that? It's no different than the relationship. You, you ask somebody out, so let's go to a movie, and then you say, well, my, my, I don't handle scheduling the movies. My assistant will do that. Is that somebody you want to be affiliated with moving forward? No. You sell through delivery. And then after delivery, you sell by providing customer service if they need it. We talked about last time about complaints and like problems they have. Where do you think the complaints come? Up front or behind? Behind the cell. Okay, something shows up, truck driver just has a bad day, he's kind of rude, got cut off in traffic, that type of thing. Whose problem is that? Is that truck driver's problem or your problem? Well, I'm going to make it the truck driver's problem. But who's the, who's the, when I walked in those places for Pennington C, who was the face of Pennington C? If there's issues with billing, if we were supposed to charge them $55 and we charge them $555, who's getting the phone call? Yeah. Is it okay for me to say, nah, that's doggone, that's, that's Lucy's problem up in the office. She screwed that up. Is that something that should come out of my mouth to that customer? Yeah. Or, oh my, my goodness, this is horrible. I apologize. I'm pretty sure it was a simple error, but for you, that's a big deal. I'm going to get it fixed. And next time, free shipping. Do you make amends that way? Here's the thing with the sale. Everybody thinks oh, I'm going to sell, I'm going to move on, that's it. Okay, I don't care whether you're selling cars, fertilizer, shoelaces, Sasquatch bottle openers, follow up is key. Follow up is key. You need to constantly be in touch because that's what people in relationships do. And we're building relationships. That's how we sell. If you have a great experience with like a car salesman, and they're honest with you and they follow up and they even they send you a little car. Hey, thanks for, you know, I've gotten cards from people that I didn't buy a car from. That made me want to go like talk to them again when I need one. You bet. You bet. Now, if I buy that car and it takes care of and I get to a point where my kids get old enough to drive, Lord help me. Okay. Where do you think I'm going? Where I trust. Where I have a relationship. People that have followed up. People that have followed up. So it matters. You have to sell through the target. My football coach coming up, um, I was a, I was an outside linebacker. I, I like hitting people. I didn't like getting hit, but I like hitting people. And I, like, I like to be the one delivering the punishment as it's absorbing it. Okay? And my coach always said, Kiesler, tackle through the target. Because the temptation is to get up to somebody and just lean into them and slow up. Is there any way to tackle anybody? I need to be tackled three feet behind you. Okay, that's where I live. Okay, sales is no different. Only your way of tackling is having a relationship. Okay, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Okay. So what does this start look like? First of all, they talk about Hershey, Pennsylvania. I've been there. Pretty cool. You got like a park and stuff. What are relationship enhancers and detractors? Yeah. Got a perfect divide in the board here. I'm just going to use it and I can't draw a straight line apparently. Enhancers and detractors. I'm talking about sales relationship here. If you're focused on making one sale, how many sales are you making? If you're focused on making 100 sales, how many sales are you making? Probably a thousand. 
Why? What's the difference? A detractor of from a sales relationship focuses on the short run. How can I get this one sale right now? Whereas an enhancer focuses on the long term, the long run. Thousand sales, one at a time. What would you rather do? Thousand sales, one at a time. If you're focused on long run relationship building, you follow up on every sale. You sell through the sale, okay? You sell through delivery. You say, you know what? All right, let's, let's go ahead a minute. Are, are your warehouse people gonna be perfect? Is a person they talk to in the office phone always gonna be perfect? No, what happens to people? They have bad days. I mean, we're living through a pandemic. It feels like we've had more bad days than good days, yes? Okay, it's been a challenging time. Does that affect people's mood? Does that change when they go in and become a customer service agent that your customer might call because you're out on a different sale? No, they're, they're human beings. They're human beings. They're going to have they're going to they're going to have fights. They're going to have medical challenges. They're going to have some kind of rodent or raccoon hanging out in a clay pot somewhere. Yeah. I wish I could take y'all there with me. You know, I wish we had that point where like I could show a memory out of my head just so you can see me in like a golf shirt falling on my buttocks, just going backwards in khakis on a dirty floor, trying to get away from something I found into a, I found in a clay pot. It's great. Uh, enhancers deliver more. What does that mean? They underpromise. And they overdeliver. What does that look like? Overdeliver. I was gonna say delivery. Must be lunchtime, I'm thinking. All right. Remember my guy down in Georgia with the fertilizer bag problems? And did I ever tell him I was gonna be perfect? No, I said there's no way to be perfect. In fact, I know you're going to get a busted bag of fertilizer from me. What's the difference? Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix it. Now, secretly, when I left, did I tell him that I called my warehouse and say, this guy's whole sales depends on y'all sending him complete bags? What am I hoping we deliver? Perfection. But did I tell him we're going to be perfect? No, I said we're in perfect. We're in a perfect world. Okay, it's just logistics, weight. You know, bottom bag on a 500 pound pallet of fertilizer has 460 pounds on it. You understand? So, I mean, the sheer physics of it's going to wear down over time. Depending on how fast he sells the bags, depending on Roy from down the street when he picks up a bag, doesn't just drag it across the floor and rip it open. We're never going to be perfect. But your follow-up can approach perfection. Okay? You don't just move on. What, what do detractors do? What do terrible salespeople do? Overpromise. Isn't that really close? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me or you? Me. Either way, we can do that one. <laughs> Overprice, underdeliver. They overpromise, they underdeliver. I think I said overpriced. They might be overpriced too. Sorry. I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm trying to write, not write delivery on everything. Food. Okay. Relationship enhancers communicate often. It says call, but I don't want you to think of call as just telephone. I want a sales call every day and they're in person. <laughs> Listen. Nowadays, I mentioned they're making calls virtually. Is interesting. Okay. I know a lot of my customers in Georgia. I don't. I don't think they'd get on Skype type. You know, like <laughs> it was in person or not at all. I once, I literally was sick one week, like had like flu or something, and I couldn't get there. And those folks down there were like, "You ain't coming here. I ain't seeing you any business." Fair enough. Well, if I come there right now, I'm gonna give you the flu. So I'm doing you a favor. Thank you very much. Thanks for thinking of me. I don't care. Click. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So maybe, you know, take some vitamin D, stay healthy. Okay. Communicate often. What do you think your tractors do? At best, they communicate sporadically. Or make a sale and disappear. Can't do that. All right. Enhancers add value. Detractors only show up when it benefits them. Time for another order. I got to hit my number. Not, hey, Andy, how you doing today? How can I help your business? It's, hey, Dave. Man, I'm really behind my quota. Can you buy this? Those two statements have two different statements of value. One of them has value. One of them says, look at me, look at me. I'm Vanity Smurf. Look at me. It's all about me. Let me talk about me. Okay. Also, you're looking at like one's a person and one's just a number. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like, I would, in that a perfect example, right? Andy, how's your business talking about? That's concern for Andy. Dave, Dave, I need you to do me a favor. Order this so I can get my number. That's concern for Jonathan. You're not left all warm and fuzzy, like, yo, oh, I can't wait for that guy to come back. You're like, you know what? I really got this terrible problem with computer software. In that situation, I may not sell computer software, but I'm always in the field. I, mean, I, I might know the guy who sells computer software. Can I hook y'all up? Yeah. This is dude named Gage. Next thing I know, y'all hit it off. <laughs> he leaves selling computer software and starts becoming a teacher and has his own YouTube eating show. The person who's pescatarian. Which eliminates most of food. Did I add value in that situation? One's a giver, one's a taker. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna say that. This is a giver. This is a taker. And once they're taken, they don't wanna do business with you anymore, okay? This person is available. This person is unavailable. All right. This person, oh, golly. If I could describe my year and my level of frustration on so many levels with anything, leaders take responsibility. Do you understand? Leaders take responsibility. So if there's something going on with something I'm associated with, it's my fault. Do you understand? This person takes responsibility. Even if it's, listen, your driver, you're not going to believe this. He came in, he came in here and he's yelling at all my people and then he pulled his pants down and mooned somebody. Was that me? But is it me? I now represent a brand that goes around yelling at people and eventually mooning them. Is that my responsibility to take care of? To go and to tell everyone in that warehouse, they, you know, whatever. I'm sorry, that won't ever happen again. In fact, that person's let go. Okay. That's how, am I the ambassador for that? Is it my responsibility? Did I do any of that? No, but it's mine. Leaders take responsibility. I hate it. When stuff goes sideways and people say, oh, it's so-and-so's fault, it's not my fault, it's, I can't freaking stand that. Oh, I can't stand that. Ask anyone on this campus, Can Kies, does Kiesel like it when you try to lay your blame at somebody else's feet? Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> it bothers me. It bothers me to no end. Because if you're in charge of something, everything's on you. Whether it has, if, 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 all right, so um, no one saw this pandemic coming, right? 
But if it's your company, if it's your school, if it's your business, if it's whatever, it's on you to respond to it, right? And no one has a playbook for this. I'm, I'm doing a lecture concurrently online that apparently all my online students ignore. Wearing a mask where I can barely breathe, okay, but I'm still trying to teach. All right, it's my responsibility to teach you as best I can to prepare to put this together, regardless of the fact that there's no playbook for this. Your mom have a playbook for pandemic hardware store? Negative. Starting to be impressed with Samira and Flowers, and that's that, that looks like a playbook that's going to work. Good for her. Okay, plus she's trying to. She doesn't care about HOA. That's incredible. There was no playbook for the entire VA program. You understand that? There was. Don't say that. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. There was no playbook. We're making it as we go. You guys. That's what makes you so cool. Okay. I offer. What am I doing right after this for you? Letter of recommendation. Okay. That y'all got that. Y'all showing up. If you're showing up, y'all got that. Y'all got that? Why? Because you bet on me. I take responsibility for that. You got problems, you come to me, yes? Okay, I'll take responsibilities for that. Sometimes I act like a red-butted baboon if somebody's doing you wrong, but that's okay. And then at those meetings, people don't take responsibilities. I give them that look. It goes right back to macro. Remember eyes on me? Remember that one? I, get, I gave a staff member an eyes on me talk the other day. It was awesome. Oh, no. Pretty sure they had just gone to the bathroom. Otherwise, I mean, a little TT going down the leg. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can only control you and how you react. And I'm telling you, if you take responsibility, you are enhancing the relationship. You will make sales. Even if it's something egregious to where they'll never buy from you again, take responsibility. For it. You understand? I mean, they know it's not you that came in and did something really stupid, but it's your responsibility. Okay. The detractors from the relationship, whew, they lie, they exaggerate, or blame someone else. It's not my fault. Bobby's fault. It's the truck driver's fault. It's not my fault. It's the forklift driver's fault. It's not my fault. It's the schedule's fault. It's it's your fault. Take responsibility. When you become a salesperson, they give you what's called a territory. And a territory is your kingdom. Everything that happens for your good or service within that kingdom is your responsibility, good or bad. Do you understand? If you take, that's called, you know what this is called? Take me, take ownership. I don't care whether or not you start your own business. I hope you do. I'm a big fan of that. Okay, well, you know, in scheduling freedom and eventually financial freedom, you stick with it and do it smart. But the reason why, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going on the internet. You guys, Jeremy, anybody, Ed, any of those guys that used to oversee me as sales, if you want to tell them I was half-assed, do it in the comments. But I doubt they're going to do it because I was damn good at my job. You understand me? You know why? I treat it like my own business. And if your business delivers piss poor results, that's your responsibility to take ownership of it. You don't lie, you don't exaggerate, and you sure as crap don't blame someone else. You don't blame someone else. You you work, it's for the Lord. Look at me getting into this, okay? In fact, I take ownership when I do this. I'm an usher. I'm supposed to only be on like April, July. But I, I mean, I've been on like every service but one since Christmas Eve. I got section 15. Take pride in your section. Are there any gum wrappers in section 15? Are there any inefficient use of seats in section 15? You know why? My mom and daddy told me this. Section 15 will be the best section in that whole church. You understand? There's 16 sections in the church. Okay. Take ownership. Pennington C. Who controlled Mount Pleasant down in the Florida line, inland to Statesboro, Georgia? Okay. When I had NASA Corp, which is now over the counter, okay, 
and I had every allergy doctor in Charleston. What did I do? What are you going to do when you have to sell something? What are you going to do when you get into grad school for that doggone rec letter of recommendations? I'm going to write here in a bit. Take ownership. If you take ownership, all this other crap comes together real easy. You understand? All right, so take ownership. You own it. By the way, this commercial break is brought to you by your next reflection paper is due Sunday. Section three, right? It's kind of long. Looking forward to it. Not really. When I pull them up at first, I'm a little overwhelmed when I see like 18 papers there. Some people aren't working real hard, so let's say maybe 17 papers. Okay? All right. Can you check from this video that you have? I don't think he checks that either. Okay. I'm just off the chart. Relationship enhancement activities. I just kind of want to cover this. It's in the book. It's exhibit 9.3. Relationship enhancement activities. Partnership enhancement, so you provide useful information. Salesperson's responsibility is to provide relevant, timely, and high quality information. Okay. How do you start that? Well, if it's relevant, that's, that's the first thing, relevant. How do I know what's relevant for each one of my clients? I ask them open-ended questions, I get them talking, and we listen. Can you also observe? All right, if the guy down in Georgia wouldn't even talk to me, but I look around, Underneath every pallet is busted fertilizer. You think he's happy about that? Did he have to say a word to me about that? I'm just walking around. Dude, don't give me time of day. I've had ones where I just walk in and say, like, here's my business card. And if he had a bunch of busted fertilizer, I'll guarantee my fertilizer will start buying it from there. And I walk out. Like, hey, son, hold on, hold on. What's that about this guarantee? Did he speak to me before that? Just walk and look. Just walk. And look. What is this? Yeah. You can enhance when you expedite orders and monitor installation. That means sell through the delivery, right? Okay. Track orders, inform delays, help with installation. Oh man, that's another thing. Can you control the weather? Can you control the 10 car pilot? Can you control if the truck won't start? Did I tell you about the, the deliveries I had to make down in Georgia? No? Painting seed, I was out on uh, Monday. I normally go spend the night down in Brunswick, Georgia, and get up on Tuesday and sell my way all back to Savannah, and then I go back to Charleston, okay? I got called, I said, go home. Your truck's full, we can't sell anymore. What do you mean? We had a driver leave, you can't, we, we don't have another driver. I said, rent me a truck, and I'll deliver. And I kept selling. And instead of spending the night in Brunswick, I drove all back to Columbia, South Carolina. That's a long way. Look at the map. Basically, Florida line back to Columbia, South Carolina. Gave me a ride truck. Got in it. Rode up. You know how they have those way stations? I didn't know whether I was supposed to stop or not. I didn't. I never got pulled, so I just kept going, man. Big wheel, keep on turning. Probably maybe keep on burning, baby. All right, made my deliveries, got the heck home. Back to, Charles, back to Columbia, put the truck up, drive back to Charleston. Did my people get their stuff? I could have just kept selling knowing they weren't going to get delivery, correct? Would that have been devastating to, them, to my relationships? Sell through delivery and then follow up. Okay, I'm going to write that. Sell through delivery product or service. And then follow up. My follow up, of course, what do I mean? Sell more. How'd this go? Okay, good, good. Oh, you have a problem? Let me fix it. All right. What else do you need? Start it all over again. So it's a cycle. Okay. Ask, listen, sell. Ask, listen, sell. We're good? Next. Train customer personnel. Train even when contact does not call for it. Okay. How do you train personnel? All right, let's go back to your shoelaces example. Okay. What if they like custom shoelaces that have to be turned one particular way or else they won't show the digital print you put on them? 
should you train the people in the store to lace them up correctly or to train their users how to use them correctly? All right. That was a big delivery system with some of the allergy meds. Like people would have inhalers and stuff. What if I sold people a bunch of inhalers and left them samples, but didn't tell them, teach them how to properly teach a child how to use them? Am I selling? No. They were like, this stupid thing doesn't work. Oh, no, you got to take this little clip out and then do that. It takes like 30 extra seconds to show them how to do it. Does that add value? Is that enhancing? Yeah. Correct billing errors, and they're going to happen, man. Go over all orders. This is the thing that people cut corners. Every night when I was in sales, I'd pull up all the invoices or I'd call and say, hey, send me the invoices. I literally had them faxed to me one time. That tells you how old I am. OK. Did I double check that when they were supposed to be charged 89 cents a bag, they were not charged $89 a bag? Did that, that take me five minutes? Is that good? Good practice? Follow up. Follow up. Remember the customer after the sale. That's what we've been talking about here. Set up regular call schedules. Uh, when I can call, I mean like in person too. Okay. Um, I got down in Ridgeland, Ridgeland, if you can see, I don't remember his name, but I hope he's still there. Nice guy. He, uh, I was always down there every Monday morning by 8.30. He knew that I was going to walk in and we were going to do an order right there. Did I establish a habit with him? Did he know I was dependable? Let me tell you about him versus the guy down in Georgia when I was sick. He knew if I wasn't there at 8.30, he'd call me. Now, I think he'd call me and make sure he could get his order for the next day. But when he called me, he said, Jonathan, you okay, man? I'm worried about you. Yeah, man, sorry, I've been sick. <laughs> you know, up all night, real sick. Is that a relationship when your customer starts calling you and say, Andy, you okay? Bro, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I immediately started apologizing. Man, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, food poison or something, I've, I've lost like three pounds overnight. Kind of calls me hey man about you okay is that that's the epitome when your customers start calling you that's the epitome of that sales relationship that's the epitome because they can just wait for the next guy to breeze in correct all right so make regular calls resolve complaints preferably per, prefer, that i can't speak preferably prevent the need to complain so you try to be on top of it that's why you look at those invoices every night and make sure they're not being charged 89 dollars with 89 cents ask the customer how he or she wants the complaint resolved like hey how can i make this right kind of thing and quite frankly they might tell you you can make it right by going you know blink yourself but i mean that happens and it's gonna happen what i tell you one out of 100 you gotta bet one percent a lot of people in the Hall of Fame can bet 1%, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Three point percentage, 1%. I, I can do that. <laughs> Fair work can do that in green style. Okay. So the ball on a peach bat is pretty easy that way. But if you bet 1%, you'd be all right. But if you bet 1% and you enhance and add value, I guarantee you'd be bet a lot more than 1%. If you're doing all the little things right, all the big things will come together. Okay. Compounding interest is not just for economics. It's not just for saving. I think I got a little thing on the gram right now. At job economics, um, you have compounding interest in good habits, in your health, in your mental health, in, which I know y'all probably do the mental health part right now, but um, in your bank account, in good decisions. If you make all the little decisions wiser, you'll never be perfect, right? Just like you'll buy a stock and it'll go down in value, you can't want that. You just don't want to buy all stock to go down in value. Try to make good decisions. Okay? Be a decent human being. Be a relationship enhancer. Now, what are some typical comp uh, customer complaints? I'm on the exhibit 9-5. Again, I'm not going to write them up here. The top 15, late delivery. That's going to happen, bro. Hurricane comes through, your delivery's gonna be late. Okay. Uh, damaged merchandise, that's gonna happen. It's all about how you react to it. Invoice errors, that's gonna happen. The difference between 89 cents and $89 is two keystrokes. You understand that? Now, if you're my customer and you see $89, you're supposed to be 89 cents, are you happy? No. That's why you need good follow up. 
where you say, oh, man, that's terrible, dude. I should have caught that. I'm going to go fix that right now. I'm going to fix that right now. In fact, we're going to make it zero this time. It's 89 cents. What's, what's the point? I can just give it to them, right? Okay. Out of stock back orders. Can you really control that? No, but is it your responsibility? Take ownership. Okay. Shipped incorrect product happens all the time. Okay. Shipped incorrect order size. You just happened on with Amazon? I have. I bought shoes one time. They're got them a little like naked wear them. I'm like, bro, this ain't gonna work. Okay. Um, service department unresponsive. They had a bad day. Okay. Product does not live up to expectations. Uh oh. <laughs> And then you need to reflect in the mirrors to whether or not the product you're representing is good enough. Don't just take any sales job. Take a sales job you'll be good at with a product that is good. You understand? A product that is great. Product or service. Um, service department on product does not live up. Uh, customer not informed of new developments. Okay. If I know I got a tropical storm coming in, it's going to delay an order by, by a day. What am I going to do? I'm going to call them. I'm going to let them know. I'm sincerely apologize. I'm even going to give them the option to cancel. Now, I wouldn't make a big, big to-do about that, but if they push back and say, hey, man, I, I, I know you need it, but we don't feel safe putting our drivers on the road. Customers' problems not taken seriously? That's a complaint. Okay? You don't stay in relationships where you're not taken seriously. Okay? Improper installation goes back to service level. Need more training goes back to service level. Price increase and no notice. You know what? selling her i'm just gonna hope she doesn't know that's not good is it that's kind of like being in a relationship and your, your significant other says hey i think i'm just gonna start dating other people and not tell her that okay don't be cheating on people with your prices either cannot find the sales people or salesperson when needed you know why they're the tracker they're the tracker all right, and unreturned unreturn phone calls. Every right. one of these, you focus on short run, you over promise, under deliver. Communicate over promise, under deliver. You say this product's the best thing ever, and it's not. You understand? Communicate sporadically, they don't know when you're coming through, they don't know when you're calling. I only show up when it benefits them. Oh, here comes this guy, he must need to sell. Okay, unavailable, they lie, exaggerate, blame someone else. You know what this person is when they walk through? Literally, when they walk into your business, this person, God. here comes that Kiesler guy again. Is that the reaction you want? They can't wait for you to leave. In fact, they, they wish you don't show up. Versus, dude, John, what's up, man? Come here. You see the ball game? Let's talk about this. Hey, you know, all that good stuff. All that. Hey, what you need? What you need from me? Look, how can I help you? You want to be the person, whether you're selling pharmaceutical sales, yoga lessons, art, flowers, nails, baseball mitts. You want to be the one where they walk in and they're like, hell yeah, Rodney's here. Come on, homie. Come on back. Let's talk. That's access you cannot buy. That's value that you can deliver to your customer. And if you can, if, if your boss happens to tag along, I hate Rod Alonso. But your boss happens to tag along and they see you walking in like that. Holy crap, Dave, dude. Man, let's talk raise. Let's talk promotion. You got how can you teach other people how to do this? Does that help your sales career? Yeah, man. Yeah. When I was in um, hospice business, um, I called a lot on MUSC Cancer Center, and it was a tough place. Um, it's kind of a the incredible people work there, but it, I mean, it's a tough environment, right? Um, but people have the biggest heart. What's up, man? Candyman, what's going on? Um, I can walk past the front desk, go in the back, talk to docs, talk to case managers, really the decision making. How? How could I do that? No one else could do it. Was it me? I just had this magnetic personality. It must be me. I just talked about me. Talked about my great feats. I feel like I'm comfortable telling you all these examples. I'm just trying to tell you what worked. I'm not bragging. Trust me, there are plenty of times I sucked. All right. How could I get back there? 
I built the relationships. How did I build the relationships? Am I just that suave? Am I just that clever? When I said hi a minute ago, and broke the five simple rules and put my mask down and said hi, but we are more than six feet apart. Where did I call myself? Did you catch that? Candyman. Good listening skills. One little word here or there. Why do you think you called me Candyman? They didn't even know my name and I could walk back out. What are people feeling in like a cancer center? Sad, apprehension, fear. Okay. When you feel anxiety, when you feel sad, when you feel apprehension and fear. Something like with milk chocolate or caramel will make you feel better. I had a cart. I walked around. I went to Costco. Every other week. I don't think I did it every week. I'm pretty sure it was every other week. And I'd buy, remember those big bags you buy on Halloween? I'd buy like five of those. And anybody that wanted a piece of candy, they could have it. I didn't sell crap. What did I do? Delivered miniature Snickers bars. Who else needs it? Who else is feeling sad? Who else is having anxiety? Probably the people working there. The ladies at the front desk see my cart. Oh, can I have a almond joy? That's sneaky love almond joys. Sneaky love almond joy. Now, so, hey, who are you? Oh, I, I, I work with when you are down that that's Oh, okay. Well, let me know if you ever need anything. Oh, by the way, who who refers to all your hospice? Oh, that's Wayne. Okay, hey, enjoy your candy bowl. Back there next Thursday. Um, Joe? Hey, what's the lady's schedule? You think I can get in with it? Oh, honey, you keep bringing his on, Joyce. I'll let you talk to whoever. <laughs> <laughs> the bags at the time were 1388 at Costco. 1388 times six, whatever that is. I ain't doing the math on it, okay? Okay. I said, oh, let's do go 14 more tax. 84 bucks every two weeks. 84 bucks. By the end of it, by about week four or five, I built relationships. Now the cart's going back where people can't see it. Wayne. Wayne, you like the candy? Yeah, yeah, who are you? I'm Jonathan. What do you represent? Oh, hospice. Oh, you know what I got this lady over here? Can you help me with that? Sure. Then I start listening to her. What's your biggest need? I need people to take care of my patients. Well, don't crap. Every nurse wants people to take care of their patients. But what do you need? Really? I get these doggone appointments after three, and I gotta go pick up my kid by like 4 15, or else I get in trouble with school and I have to pay extra. Well, I'll tell you what, if you get any referrals, let's say after two o'clock, you call me, give me a room number and where the file is, and I'll take it from there. Candy got me through the door. Service and listening got me the referrals. Okay. I did that so far and so long that someone literally, my competitors, wrote a letter to the president of UMC complaining about the candy man. Didn't even know my name. <laughs> so he comes in there and starts watching. He like, go home. Snickers book. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they still don't know my name, man. Say my name three times like Candyman. I mean, that bring, it got to a point it was obscene. And my boss came up in there and he's like, they're like, Candyman's here. It's like, you know, the wire when you're saying, hey, Omar, Omar coming. All right. Every referral. That's 84 bucks. 84 bucks every two weeks. Find your ticket. Listen. Give them what, just what they need. They got fear, they got anxiety. You give them peace, you give them comfort. Then you get through the door and you listen. And when you listen, you take notes, you figure out what, I mean, all right, first of all, sure, I was giving candy to patients. Yeah? I mean, they're the most nervous one. But I was giving candy for access. And when I got access, I listened. And when I solved a problem, I was getting all the referrals just because they needed to go home time. And when I delivered and followed up and did all these things and was an enhancer, I got more and more business, more and more business, more and more business. And I was there consistently. I, I, was, I was not unavailable. I did not lie, exaggerate, or blame someone else. Communicated regularly. 
I showed up whether I got a referral or not. All right. To a point, my competitors wrote a complaint letter to the president of the college. I'll take responsibility for that. I'm smiling, you can't see it, but I'll take responsibility for that. Be so good, your competitors think you're cheating. Does that make sense? Which is, tells me they're a detractor because they exaggerate what I must be doing. Costco, 84 bucks, six times 13.88. Every other week. What, what, what time is it? Tim, fish. Oh, shoot. We're over. I'm not saying anything. Uh, here's how to handle complaints. Build a relationship to a point the customer's comfortable complaining to you. Do we screw up? Sure. Okay. Candyman, y'all screwed up. How can I fix it? I'm, I'm coming. I'll be there. Let me do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got to swing by Costco real quick. Okay. Listen carefully. Get the whole story. Understand. Don't jump to conclusions because what the story starts out might not be the actual problem. Ask your customer what he or she would like you to do. How can I fix this? What's the best way I can fix this for you? Uh, gain an agreement on a solution. Hey, if I did X, Y, and Z, would this fix it? Yeah, that would be great. And give me an, another arm and joy. All right. Uh, tell the customers what, what you can do and do not focus on what you cannot do. Here's what I can do. Don't focus on what well, I can't do. X, y, no, here's what I can do immediately. All right. Take action. Educate the customer so he or she has realistic expectations and follow through on all promises. Add value. Add value. And, uh, sell through the delivery and then follow up. Sell some more. I believe that's all I had for you guys today. Uh, exhibit 9-7. I know there's so much I want to get in touch with, but it was enhancing customer value. It's a lot of this stuff. Be this person, not this person. This person is genuine. This person here is full of crap. This person cares about the customer. This person cares about themselves. Be what you hope to have in a relationship. The end. Hope you enjoyed it.